I never thought I would see this day. The day a prototype showed up. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. That's right, a prototype of a very well-loved limited edition model showed up on Reverb about a month ago. How long exactly? I don't remember how long. Three months ago! <laughs> okay, time flies. I remember when this was first listed. So this is a Les Paul 2550th anniversary. To the best of my knowledge, this was the third anniversary model that Gibson offered. The first one being the 20th anniversary Les Paul Custom, which you can see these things are not very limited edition at all. You can find them all the time for sale. Most of these were made in 1974, but sometimes you find 75s with the inlay too. And there you can see it, it says 20th anniversary. Besides that, they're just the same. This was not a super special guitar by any means. You could find them in black, this tobacco sunburst color, cherry sunburst, and there's also some white ones. I guess you could say a famous user of this era of guitar is Randy Rhodes, but his did not have the inlay. So that's one of those times when, you know, actually having the anniversary model is detrimental to the resale value of it. And the next anniversary model was for the 25th anniversary of the Les Paul. So that means from 1952, when the Les Paul was initially introduced to the market, all the way until 1977. And it's this one. This is a guitar that not a lot of people know about, but it's one I definitely want to document one day. It's the 25th anniversary Les Paul Custom in silver. This was actually supposedly a Guitar Center limited edition model, but if I remember correctly, there was like 25 made with gold hardware and 25 made with chrome. Here's an example of a gold one. But essentially what makes this thing special is this is the first time silver was used on a Les Paul Custom. And if you're into Gibson history, Silver Burst started to be prototyped in 1977, so I think it's actually because of these guitars that they tried putting that burst on it later on and then releasing it officially in 1978. So besides being the first of the silver, look at the tailpiece. It says 25th anniversary on it. Sometimes you'll find these examples show up on the used market and they won't have that. Like somebody will have replaced it because they didn't want it to say it on there. And that just kills it for me. I've passed on a few of them because of that. But other than the fancy finish and the tailpiece, it's just a regular Les Paul custom. So in comes this thing. Bam! Look how much fancier this guitar is. I've done full reviews and demos on these 2550s. I've had every single color except black because they have tobacco sunburst, which can kind of vary. There's a wine red, a black, and you can also find some natural ones. There are rumors that there was a custom ordered white one as well. And seeing as how the Les Paul Artisan also has a very rare white iteration out there, it's very possible. But look at this thing. It is still a Les Paul Custom, so you've got the binding on the top as well as the back. It's got two humbucking pickups with a pick guard, your traditional two volume, two tone setup. What are you gonna see, huh? We've got this fancy tailpiece that's called the TP6. It was invented by Rendell Wall. You can use it to do some fine tuning adjustments, but it's mainly for the looks. And you'll also notice, huh, a mini toggle switch. Yes, this was like one of the First, it might actually be the first Gibson to feature stock from the factory, a mini toggle switch for coil splitting these pickups. And the pickups that are stock within these are called the Series 7. They're actually very prone to uh, uh, breaking. So if you're ever buying a 2550, make sure that coil split works and that both coils are operating within the pickups because it is very common now for these things to die. So like sometimes the guitar will still work, but you won't even realize that only one coil is working. But you'll also see this has a two-piece flamed maple top. In this era of Gibson history, everything had three to seven pieces on it. So the fact that these are two-piece is actually something that is very special for this time frame. In Gibson today, if you had anything other than a two-piece maple top, people would freak out on you. But then we move on to the fretboard here. You're going to see these cool inlays. They initially originated on the Super 400 Archtop guitar, and they were later used on the Super Custom guitars as well. And then moving on to the face of the headstock, you're going to see this. We've got a brass nut, which is something that Gibson did in the late 70s because it was all the rage for the best sustain to have that. And if we actually move on back here, the bridge underneath there, there's something called the Sustain Sisters. It's like a little brass block. A lot of high-end Gibsons in the era had that. But then you also have the brass truss rod cover. Kind of a similar story to the nuts. But look at this. 25 
50. So this is the 25th anniversary of the Les Paul and the 50th anniversary of Les Paul the man himself within the music business. But wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. I thought this was the 25th anniversary. It was made in 1977. What's going on here? Well, research and development took a little bit too long on this guitar, so they technically have the dates a little bit wrong, but 25 and 50, it's the silver and gold anniversary, and you're gonna see that they played on that with this guitar. You can see things like the washer was gold on the tuner, but the nut was still chrome. When you flip over to the back, you can see the bodies are gold, but the tuner tips themselves are chrome. If you really zoom in here, you can see the sustain sisters are actually chrome as well. But these are just kind of cool guitars, and the early ones came with a 25 50th anniversary belt buckle. You had to send a little postcard in to get it, and those things are very expensive. But be careful, be super careful with what you buy, because there are so many fake belt buckles out there. So that's a quick overview of the 25 50th anniversary model. I pretty much know that speech by heart. But now that we understand this a little bit better, let's take a look at this. This was the second prototype to ever be made. Now keep things in mind that there were 3,411 of these made between 1978 and 1979. Now that's just what shipping ledgers show. You can find some that were also made in 1980 and you can check which number you have by looking right here. There was a four digit stamp right underneath the serial number. Now I have found a few that actually exceed that 3,411 number. So once again, that's just the shipping ledgers. That's not exactly how many were made, but these were all made in Kalamazoo. But this one is number two, and it's stamped with the Gibson original prototype stamp. When I saw this, it's like, finally, I never thought I would see a prototype for this guitar. Because there's also a rumor surrounding the first 100 of these guitars that they were made with new old stock 60s flame tops. Now, if you really think about that, they really weren't making that many less balls in the 60s. You have 1960, and then in the late 60s, like 68, 69. So... I guess it's possible, it just kind of seems like an old wives tale to me at this point, because a lot of these will have nice flame tops anyways, but there's always that lore that makes the first 100 even more valuable than the rest. I've actually owned two of them within there. And just as a fun fact, the 25 50th anniversary was my first vintage Gibson Les Paul purchase. But the only thing that I see that is extra special about this guitar is take a look at the bridge. It looks like they were toying with the idea of having a chrome bridge and then the gold posts and then the chrome sustain sisters. Or it's possible it's a replacement, but I guess we'll never know. We just have to take this prototype for its word. But the other thing that's super special is look at this top. This makes me want to believe that it's like a 60s or 50s new old stock top because this is unlike most of the other 2550 tops. Usually they have kind of a weakish flame and it's always straight. This one has that waviness that I absolutely adore. It seems like you might have a slight dead spot right here, or it just might be the photo angle, but this is one of the nicer 2550s in a tobacco sunburst that I've seen. But other than that, it seems they had this model pretty well dialed in. I'm not sure how many prototypes were made. This could have been the last one, or maybe they did five. And can you imagine my surprise seeing this for the first time listed on Reverb as a guy who loves this model, loves collecting like the really rare guitars and documenting them. So I clicked on the listing. The first thing I see, once again, that super flame top, I noticed the bridge. It seemed to be in fairly okay condition. Move to the next one. You see the prototype stamp. You see right there, it's a number two. That is all looking good. You can see even the tuners were correct in this stage of its life. And then I go to this one and I go, no! <laughs> somebody played it! As a collector, it makes me sad, but, you know, at least somebody enjoyed the guitar. You got a big old patch of rash right here. You got some marks there. That's okay. It's easy enough to replace one of those. But the neck finish, you can't bring that back. It's a five-piece maple neck with the walnut stripes down the center, but that finish is long gone. And then the next photo shows you just how ambered over this is. I mean, this was not a collector's piece. This was a serious gigged instrument. You can tell it's definitely done some time in bars. Or maybe just the owner of it did a lot of smoking. Because that headstock is super aged. 
Unfortunately, there aren't any close-ups of the face of it, but the rest of it, I mean, you can definitely tell some of the flaminess and the flame figuring looking great is because the lacquer has turned that darker color. You can see that the clear coat's actually been worn off of a lot of areas right here. So this one, it's kind of hard to say. Is it still a collectible piece or not? In my opinion, it still has collectible value, but it is nowhere near as valuable as it could have been. So how much is this guy asking for this guitar? His initial asking price was $20,000. And at that point I was like, Ugh. I would have loved to have documented this piece, but I could not see 20 grand. If this thing was in clean condition, we're not talking 100% mint, if it was just played a little bit, I could see a collector paying anywhere between 10 to 12,000 for it. Because in the market right now, these things generally sell between three to 4,000, like the really, really, really nice choice tops, maybe up to 6,000, but that's gotta be a really nice one and part of the first 100. This one being a prototype, I think it could even extend that even further, but he's still asking 12,900. If someone was to go to my website under my help appraisal tab and pay for a market evaluation of this guitar, I would estimate that somebody would still pay up to about six to six and a half thousand dollars for this prototype. So I still see it as very valuable despite being very worn. And the only offer on this one was me. I had offered him $4,000 because I think to get six and a half, you'd have to have a pretty good marketing package, which thankfully I can provide. But at that time, he, he just wasn't interested. But that's just kind of the beauty of a piece like this. You know, somebody might see this video and then just go straight and buy it. If you're a diehard collector that needs a prototype, maybe the condition doesn't matter as much to everybody as it would to me. But I just thought it'd be great to document this prototype number two because honestly, when else are you going to see a prototype of a 2550? And get this, the thing that makes me love this listing so much, look where this guy's located, Kalamazoo, Michigan. This guitar has stayed in Kalamazoo apparently its whole life. It might have gigged and toured around, but it appears to have lived in its hometown. That's just really cool to me. So for today's playing demo, let's go ahead and hear some 2550th anniversaries. <laughs> The only question left, would you rock the prototype 2550 or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.